Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Covered, I'm Penge, and welcome to Aztecs The Last Sun, which is an Aztec city builder game. So we're going to pop back in time a little bit and visit the wonderful settlement of Tenochtitlan. And yes, I did Google how to pronounce that. Thank you, Google. Very helpful. And we're going to try as best we can to transform Tenochtitlan from a little settlement into a mighty Aztec city. So to do that, we're going to have to do classic city builder things that we're very familiar with. Things like build homes and gather resources and research new things, all that kind of stuff. And of course, as well, we have to keep the Aztec gods happy, lest they smite us and kill us with lightning or take away all our teapots or something else equally as terrible. Now, this is the demo of the game, which is part of the Steam Next Fest event, which is going on right now as I record this. And of course, if you're interested, there is a link to the Steam Store page in the video description where you can check the game out and have a little go at the demo yourself if you would like to. But anyway, time to get on with it, I think. Let's dive in and get Aztecing. Okay, here we go. Fog of the Night Gods. Okay, no, what's that all about? Coatl the God's Advisor has popped up. Oh, you're wearing an amazing hat, Coatl. Look at that. That's wonderful. This fog means death, he said, and then he went away really quickly. Okay, hopefully the rest of what he said wasn't that important. So, okay, the fog is bad. And then Yayotl, the War Advisor, has popped up, also wearing an amazing hat. I'm very impressed with the hats on show so far. That's good. Meet with us in the central temple building, Templo Mare. Okay, I imagine that's Templo Mare just there because there is a big exciting button floating over it saying, hey, click me and fun things will happen. Um, okay, let's go and have a chat with those people and see how we deal with the fog because apparently the fog is bad. Okay, there's another amazing hat on display. Look at that. That's wonderful. It's huge with many pointy feathery bits. That's very good. Oh, that's us. That's us. Oh, there we are. We get a fancy hat. Okay, game of the year. We're looking good so far. So we are... Tlatuani. Tlatuani? Tlatuoni. It can't be Tlatuoni. That sounds like a pasta dish. It's got to be Tlatuani. I don't quite know how to pronounce all these Aztec names. My Aztec pronunciation is somewhat limited, but we'll go for Tlatuani. So that is us as the newly elected Aztec monarch. Okay, we're the big boss. Tlatuani, you looked at your advisors. How do we stop this accursed fog? Okay, that's a good question. We don't like the fog. Okay, continue. So who's going to come up next? Ah, right, okay, it's you. So you appeared first. So Coatl, the God's advisor. We must use the power of our guiding deity. Oh, no. <laughs> How do you pronounce that? Huitzilopochtli. Huitzilopochtli? Maybe, possibly. We'll go with what I just said just then. Yet gods require blood to operate. Okay, right. Are we talking about human sacrifice here, Coatl? Just, just you know, come out and say it, please. Just say it straight away. Don't mince your words. Just get on with it. And there's Yayotl, the war advisor. So there's only one way. We must perform a blood sacrifice. Okay. The hats on display here are very impressive. I'm loving the hatage. It's wonderful. Okay. Right. Let's go and do a bit of human sacrifice then. That's how we're going to start things off. And then the narrator pops up and says, with no options left, they headed to the Templo Mare to perform an ancient ritual. It would dispel the fog, but for how long? Hopefully a very long time, because if we have to sort of, you know, sacrifice people every time it gets a bit foggy, we're going to run out of people, I suspect. So, okay, let's continue and see what's happening now then. So, do we go and sacrifice somebody? I don't really want to go and sacrifice people, but okay. Um, right, it's, oh no, there we go. There we go. The fog has been vanquished. Okay, so we didn't have to go and actually manually kick off the sacrificing ourselves. It just sort of happened. Okay, no, that's fine. Or I can move around the place. That's all very good. Very, very, very important question that we have to answer, of course, is spacebar pause. And yes, I can happily confirm that spacebar is pause. Well done, game. Good job. Right, let's go and have a little look around woodcutters. Okay, a little kind of mission thing has popped up. Let's go and have a look around first. What have we got going on? So over here... We've got a great big kind of temple thing. That's as far as we can zoom in. There's a lot going on, look. Little sort of cage things down there. I dread to think what they're for, given that we did just do a bit of human sacrifice. Um, and then we've got little sort of market stall type things on that side. And then a gateway into there. It looks... Oh, hang on. Are there little houses? Ah, there we go. So houses out there. So some people live out here. And then we did have something over here as well. What's that out there? I can't go over there. There are buildings out there. There's like a little sort of a fishing pier type thing. And people living over there. That's exciting. Hang on a minute. Hang on. The game's paused, isn't it? 
Those people are moving about. They're not obeying the laws of the pause. Oh, dearie me. Okay, right, there you go. Please stop moving about, everybody over there. Um, okay, so job number one, then. Build a woodcutter's outpost. Okay, do we click on that, then? Hint, wood is a key building resource. Woodcutter's outpost can be found in the buildings panel. Okay, that makes perfect sense. Uh, and then, yes, pop them out into an area where there's lots of trees, and they will obviously cut down some trees for us, and we can get some wood. Okay, where is, where's the building panel? Okay, hang on a minute, let's get time moving on. Um, oh, okay, we can learn more by unfolding the hint. No, I think we just did that game. Okay, we've unfolded the hint game, that's fine. If we ever miss a message, you can go back to it by opening the message history. Okie doke, we will do that. We'll click on all the things you're telling us to do. Okay, yep, yeah, that's fine. Oh, there we go. The build button has now appeared. Right, you are. So hang on, let's go and do that then. So let's build a woodcutter's outpost. That requires 15 of something, but I'm not quite sure what that is. There's a lot of wood over here, look. Let's put you around here, I think. Can we rotate you round? Yeah, if we pop you there, look. Plenty of trees around there for you to go and chop down. That's going to be fine. Do we need a road connection or anything? Is that what we need? Okay, hang on. How do we get rid of... How do we get rid of that thing sticking out? Do we click on some of these things? Oh, there we go. It's gone away. Okay. Connection need... Ah, right. We do need that. It's time to acquire wood, but it's not connected to a road. Okie doke. Right, so... Create road. Um... We can do mud digging. Get mud by removing a piece of ground. Oh, okay. So we pick up mud. Uh, mud raising. We use mud to make a piece of buildable land. Oh, so we can build on the water. So we get to build up over here. Oh, that's quite fun. Ooh, there's sparkly stuff in the sea. That's quite fun. Uh, remove roads. No. Okay, so just create a road. And the road can come out. Oh, hang on a minute. I've not done that very well. And the cost is one cocoa. Okay, our primary currency is in cocoa. That's going to cost five cocoa to build a road. Are we building the road out of cocoa? That's fascinating. Okay, right. So move, hang on, move time on. They've built the woodcutter outpost. So I assume when the road is in, somebody will then go and work in there and they'll start chopping down trees. Right, they're working on, is that the road in its entirety or that first little bit there? I'm not quite sure. Let's move time on a bit quicker, shall we? Get that road done, please. And then we can see what happens. So, right, connect the thing up. So, the next time round, and boop. Right, that's connected. And now we need to... Ah, there you go. Right, so, assign workers is going to cost us... Assign five commoners. Wow, okay, so max that out. Right, okay, so five people working there. Select area with trees in the woodcutter outpost. Ah, right, okay, so a build, you know, work area type thing. Pop that there. Wonderful. So, now they're going to go over here. And they're going to start chopping down trees. Look, Tatwani, the woodcut has already started delivering wood. Ah, there we go. So wood up there. We've got 55 out of a maximum of 200. Okie doke, right. That's all good. Happy with that. So they can carry on doing that to reduce wait times. Manage time using the arrows on the top left. Yeah, okay, that's fine. We can do that. So run time on. Just collect some wood. Here we go. In the tutorial land, it's all fine. What else do we have there? That's cocoa. I want to go and get some more cocoa. Okay, now we've got to feed people. Very important in games like this. Always about the food. So build a cookhouse, assign people to the cookhouse and prepare meals. And then also build a fisherman outpost and assign commoners to the fisherman outpost. We've got, what, nine unemployed people. So a fisherman outpost. Okay, let's get one of those done first, shall we? Because I saw that just there. So can that go... Hang on, hang on. Are the sparkly things fish? The sparkly things might be sources of fish. Is that what that is? They look like fish. Over there seems like a good place for one because there's plenty of fish around there. So if we put that, say, just... Uh, hang on, rotate it round like that. So pop that over there and then that has to be connected with the road. So hang on a minute. Oh, it's going to be quite... Oh, uh, yeah, it's going to be quite a long... Oh, hang on. They can put a bridge... Oh, that's quite exciting. Okay, right, hang on. Pop that over there like that. And then we're going to need that to come along to sort of there-ish, I think. There's some rocks there. So we might have to possibly get those rocks knocked out of the way. Like that, look. So a little road network leading up to that just there. Right, so move time on nice and quick. Because time does seem to go by fairly quickly. So we'll get that done. So run through the night. I don't imagine... Oh, people are. People are at work. 
people are doing stuff. Right, so the Fisherman Outpost is done. The Day of Monkey has begun. Wonderful. It's Monkey Day, everybody. Right, so Fisherman Outpost, it's not connected. Okay, so big important job number one, connect up the fishing outpost. That one little bit of road there needs to be done, and then we should be okay. But everyone's cleared off. Where are you all going? Can you come back? <laughs> Can you finish work on the road, please? Can we do that? Waiting for previous road to finish. Uh, okay. Not quite sure what that means. Can't we just go and finish this road? Can we go and whack it with hammers? There we go. Right, somebody's hitting that with hammers. There's little animals wandering about. Hello, little animals. Right, is that now done? Yes, it is. Wonderful. So, we will have five people doing some fishing, because that's what the game is telling us to do. And they're going to go and collect raw food in the form of fish. Okie doke. And now we need to put a cookhouse, put people in it, and then make meals from raw food. Okay, so the cookhouse would be a workshop. Okay, let's pop that. It's quite big. It's very big. Let's put it there so it's facing those existing houses. So they can go and get some food nice and easy. So pop that down like that. Now where's our raw food? That's wood. That's stone. That's gold. Our raw food, zero. Brilliant. Okay, wonderful. So yeah, if you lot could get fishing, that'd be really great. We have got 65 meals. That's fine. What does that mean? Um, oh, hang on. There's no... I've not selected an area to go fishing. Uh, go over there, please. Yep, that's fine. Plenty of fish over there by the look of it. Lots of fishies to go and catch. That's wonderful. Right, they're doing that. And then down here, three people into there, it says. So max out the amount of people in the cookhouse. And start production. Start processing of resource. Okay, so they're going to turn... What's that? Six... Uh, six raw food into three meals. Okay, that seems fine. I assume we have people sort of running the raw food from here down to here somewhere. Or is it just kind of like a universal resource type thing? I do not know. Can we see them doing a spot of fishing? Oh, look, they're all out here, look. They're all on little boats. Just sort of having a little paddle around. Oh, that's good. You might want to spread out a little bit. You're going to overfish that one bit over there, but that's fine. Oh, look. We've completed that mission already. New commoners. Bring in more commoners. I imagine we have to build more homes. Unemployed commoners build our structures, and almost all of them are already occupied. Okay, yeah, we need some more people. We need to encourage new commoners to come. We can do that by building households. Yes, amazing hat person. Okay, so households would be citizens. There we go. A Chantley household. Okay, so that's like a little thing. Tlatoani, your subjects are starving. Hunger is very dangerous. Are they starving? There's 44 meals. Uh, each subject eats three meals in the middle of each day. We've got plenty of food, haven't we? Have we not got plenty of food? Uh, 47 out of 75 prepare meals from raw food. So we've got to do that and then acquire raw food 15 out of 150. I think the game was being a bit overly dramatic there, but okay, right. So get another house set up. Uh, it's like that, isn't it? So how about... We can't take any of the back there, which is a bit of a shame. Keep that maybe for another big building like that. Why don't we just put one opposite like that, look? We'll have one there and another one there. How many people live in these? Five people. Okay, so we do need two of those anyway. That's fine. And then let's just pop a little road going across the front because we all love a bit of a road. Okay, wonderful. So that, yeah, that household, there we go. That's going to get built already. So put the houses together. And then when the road's in, they build the houses quicker than the road, which is a surprise, but okay. Then the population will go up because there's houses for people to move into. Okay. The day of Doggo has begun. Why can't we have these days? Oh, no, what day is it? Oh, it's Doggo. Oh, I quite like Doggo. Yeah, there you go, brilliant. Oh, no, I don't like... <laughs> what was the other one? Oh, I don't like monkey. No, oh, it's not monkey, is it? I like that. I like, I like the days of week being fun things. Okay, so we need... Hang on, they're doing the food thing. Right? But yeah, increased population. Oh, because the road isn't in. Come on, get the road in, folks. There we go. Right, so people are moving in because there are houses for them to actually go and live in now, which is wonderful. Not that much in the way of raw food. We could do with getting some more raw food, but population is creeping up, which is wonderful. People are slowly turning up thinking, wow, it's amazing here in this place. And there we go. That's all sorted. Uh, oh, 
educated nobles have also arrived. Oh, la -dee da What do we do with them? Do they need slightly better houses? Technology. Oh, are they going to go and do some research for us? Tlatuani with nobles. And that's a little picture. We can finally build the Kalmikak Academy. Okay, that sounds really exciting. So we build that and we acquire knowledge. Okay, right. First job, build an exciting academy. Okay, technology, the Kalmikak Academy. That thing is enormous. Oh my goodness me. Okay, right. Hang on a minute. Hang on. Oh, we can put it there, look. We can put it right there. Uh, nobles are unique individuals. You can assign them to work at the academy. Okay, first things first. Let's get that done, shall we? So pop that down. A new day has begun. This day doesn't have a name. That's a bit of a shame. It's not the, you know, the day of the frog or whatever. It's not the day of the llama. It's just a regular boring day. Right, so let's get that put together. Oh, okay. <laughs> they built that quick. Takes them ages to build a road, but they built an entire massive academy in no time. And then we want two people to work there. Assign nobles and start production at Kalmakak Academy to acquire valuable knowledge. Okay, so they're going to turn cocoa into knowledge. Unfortunately, uh, gathering knowledge requires funds in cocoa. I like how our entire trade is cocoa based. That's wonderful. Right, so start production. So where is our ad? There we go. 310 cocoa. Currency obtained from taxes. Collected once a day from house population. Right, so the people pay their taxes in cocoa. I like that. That's very good. And I believe I read on the Steam Store page that this game is sort of, you're know, a bit grounded in sort of, you know, vague historical accuracy. So anyway, it's sort of trying to be a little bit historically correct. So maybe back in the day, they did deal with cocoa. Maybe that was their main currency. I do not know. Right, so current job is to acquire knowledge. I did notice, yeah, they're out of wood over here, aren't they? Um, how about they go over there? Gather some wood from over there, please. That could be quite handy. A little bit far away, but you're going to be fine. Do they walk around the path together? Just walk to the trees. You're woodcutters. You should be used to that kind of thing. Um, is it worth as well building another little house? Just while we're here. Just pop a house just there. And then get the road going over to it. So get the road. Where's the road go? So like that. Bring the road across to there. And I think yeah, I can cut up the side of that house when it's done. So yeah, just another house just to get some more people in. That'll be absolutely fine. What's that? Mild hunger state. Um, oh, yeah, we haven't got much in the way of meals, have we? Um, can we can we do some more fishing? How many people have we got to spend? Nine people. Uh, okay. Oh, hang on. Having Kalmakak Cal Academy of Knowledge, you can discover new technology. Discover the Stone Miner's Outpost. Okay, how do we go about doing that? Oh, there's a shiny button at the bottom. Okay, so into here we go. And here is the technology tree. So it's all split into, what, four bits. So blood and wisdom. That sounds ominous. That sounds very Aztec. Warfare, resources, food and population. Okay, so go to resources. And the game says, okay, go and get a stone miner's outpost. Okie doke. So they're going to work on that. So 20 knowledge points and 25 wood. Okay, right. That's good. How do I come out of this? Uh, escape. There we go. Right, out we go. Wonderful. Uh, I don't know what. I don't know. I don't know if we've completed those road bits properly. Do they need to sort of... That doesn't match up, plug. There's gaps in the road network. I don't like the gaps. I feel like we did that a little bit wrong, but never mind. That's fine. Yeah, food is of concern. Food is a little bit low, isn't it? We could do with some more food. Do we get another little kind of fishing thing over here and send them over there to get some raw materials? That could be quite good, couldn't it? Hang on. Fish him an outpost. Um, we'll put it... Hang on. So it's facing that way. So pop that there and then get the road connected up. Bring that right over like that and then down to there like that. Okay, that should do the job. So two robots in that building and then we can get some more food on the go because at the moment we've got no raw food at all. A little tiny bit just came in from some fishing. A new day has begun. It, the day hasn't got a name either. It's a boring ordinary day. Boo. Right, taxes have been collected. Big pile of cocoa. That's wonderful. So how long do we have until we research our new technology thing? Can we tell how long that's going to be? We've got 40 knowledge. 
Ah, uh, I mean, do we just click? Oh, hang on. Oh, no, we can do it now. Oh, we have to have the right amount of materials to then do it. It doesn't, they don't have to sort of, you know, time doesn't tick on. Oh, no, research that then. Hooray, a stone miner's outpost. Right, we've got that done. I imagine we're going to go over here and grab some of this big pile of stone. Refugees, engage in an event near Templar. May refugees beg for your attention. They await you at the temple. Okay, hello. What's going on? Um, oh my goodness me. Okay, I feel a little bit, I feel a little bit out-hatted there because uh, Zayanya there, the leader of the refugees, has on a spectacular hat. I mean, our hat was good. That hat might possibly be better. That's wonderful. We're Aztecs like you, Tlatuani. We came from Colhuacan and eat food and shelter. We have commoners who are able to work. Okay, so now we get a choice, do we? We say yes or no. The war advisor says, be careful, Tlatuani. Kalhuacan is a hostile nation. They once exiled our tribe. Zayanya and the others turned their backs on us then. Oh, okay, there's history. We've got history with you. Why should we care about traitors now? Our food supply is already low. We cannot feed any more people. Ah, but we're working on that. Yeah, Otl, you see, we're working on it. So do we now make a choice? Okay, there we are. Tough choice. Zanya, why did you flee the Kolhuacans? Again, pronunciation, not my strong point. Dear Tlatuani, like you're writing a letter. Um, Kolhuacan has been destroyed by the cursed fog. We have knowledge which can be useful to you, but only if you take us in. I mean, yeah, well, it's fine. We're, we're going to let you in. It's okay. I mean, yeah, if we don't get on, there's always the whole sort of human sacrifice thing, but we don't want to do that. Sharing food with traitors may enrage the population, yet rejected knowledge can infuriate nobles. A tough decision lies ahead of you, Tlatuani. Oh dear. Okay. So now do we have to make a choice about what we do? So continue. Okay. They're our kin. We take them in. We're in crisis. We won't help them. So if we say yes... We acquire 15 homeless commoners and 50 knowledge, but we lose 20 trust. Okay, that sounds bad. We're in crisis ourselves. We won't help them. We acquire 30 trust, but we lose a noble. So a noble is going to go away and we lose 50 knowledge. Oh dear. No, do you know what? Let's do it. Let's bring them in. We're all one person. They'll join us in the end. It's fine. And she does have on an amazing hat. Have you seen it? Look at it. So yeah, they're akin we will take them in. So people are going to be potentially a little bit grumpy with us. Right, so they've come in. However, that means we can now put five people over there. Welcome new residents. There's a lot to do in our glorious city. Okay, so hopefully they can all run over here and get fishing. So select area, pop that over there, plenty of fish, go and get us some lovely, lovely raw food to turn into lovely, lovely meals. Because at the moment we haven't got much in the way of food. We need better living conditions, Tlatuani. Can you research Chantley Households upgrade at the Academy? Okay, possibly we could do that. Where would that be? Food and population and a housing upgrade. Okay, we need 25. Ah, 25 stone. Okay, but we can build a stone thingamajig now, which is going to be fine. Stone miners outpost. So if we put that, uh, if we put that on the corner, they can just cross the road and go and get the stone. That should be okay. If, hang on. Can we put it? Can we put it there? That's even better. Pop it just there, look. That's absolutely fine. It's on the road network already, I think. Is it on the road network already? Now I'm not entirely convinced. Okay, we'll see what happens. It might not be on the road, but never mind. They build these things pretty sharpish. Okay, five people in there. Wonderful. And select area. How about just there where there's a gigantic pile of stone? That would make sense, wouldn't it? Right, so you lot grab some stone. We've got 14 more people just sort of hanging around. Oh, 10 people have not got a house. Um, okay, what we'll do is we'll build these now and then we might have to upgrade them later. Uh, we'll pop them... Uh, hang on, put one over there, look. Can we fit some down here? No, that's a bit of a bother, isn't it? Okay, they'll have to go at the end. Why can't it go there? Exit should connect to road or ground. Oh, because it's going into the back there, of course. That makes perfect sense. Um, yeah, we could put one there, look. Could put a house like that. And then put a house like that. And then have that big central road kind of coming down the middle. I quite like the idea of that. So yeah, if we go road like that. And then road like that. 
that should be quite good. So get some housing done. That means everyone's got a place to live. And then also we're going to get our upgrade done. So have we got enough stone? Yes, we have. Research. We can now do a fancy housing upgrade. So let's go over here, look. So manage then. Uh, upgrade. So what do we need? We need, uh, what's that? 40 wood, 30 cocoa and 35 stone. How much stone have we got? 55. So we can do one house right now. So somebody go and upgrade that, please. I can't zoom in anymore. I'd love to have just a tiny bit more zoom so I could see a little bit more detail about what they're getting up to, but that's fine. My household was robbed by the homeless. Talatwani, I beg you to intervene. Oh no, one of the noble scholars. Um, hang on a minute, pause time. Uh, an event near one of the households. Whereabouts is that? Oh, it's over there. It's the one being upgraded. Okay. Hello. What's happening? Please tell me. Two homeless commoners have laid their hands on the noble's property. What is your advice? Okay, so you're saying punish them. Of course you are. That's what you would say. You should punish them, but also give them a chance to make amends by working in the construction of the new households. Okay, that makes sense. I imagine the war... Oh, hello. Wow. Okay, your hat is... Your hat is good not as good as ours and definitely not as good as that lady's hat but um okay right so this is sitlali the merchant dear tlatwani if you go soft on them the others will think they can steal without consequence better enslave them and sell them to me for 200 cocoa okay you're a slave merchant okie doke outrageous homeless people will steal to survive if we don't help them we should build households to eliminate the root cause of the problem. I'm with you, Coatl. I'm not really big into the whole slavery thing. Sorry, merchant chappy, but we're not going to go down that route. Um, okay, so what do we do? Do we build them some houses and condemn them to go and work on the housing sort of construction stuff? Or do we sell them? We're not going to sell them. We're going to do this. You will need to build three Chantley households and we get 10 trust. That's okay. We can definitely do that. Um, I think it's already done. We've already built three. In fact, we've got five done now. So I think that's complete. I think we've completed that little mission there. And it's been upgraded. That one is now done, look. And it's not a little little sort of round house anymore. It's a rectangular house with presumably stone walls because we've got stone coming in from there. Oh, no. There's that objective there. Build three Chantley households. Okay. <laughs> I thought we'd completed that. Botherations. Um, okay, how about then we build along here? We might need to build along this place. So hang on, let's get three of these things down and then we'll upgrade them as we go. So one and two and three. In fact, if we set that back, we might be able to build some more stuff along there. So hang on, bring that one back a little bit. Can't bring it to there because it's in the kind of the temple thing. So... Put that there, and then get us a bit of road that comes along like that, and then along... Oh, hang on a minute. Wait, I've, I've not done that well. Hang on a minute. Where's the road bit gone? Like that. There we go. Let's see if that actually makes a difference. So run time on a bit quickly. Building one house. Nowhere. No people to move in, but that's fine. Road is done. And building house two. Hunger's been defeated. Happiness and efficiency is back to normal. Yeah, take that, hunger. We are victorious. And we've built the houses as well. That's good. So now the homeless people have got places to go. In fact, I think we've got a gigantic, gigantic population, I think. So, okay, that's all good. Uh, we are going to need more food if we're getting all those people in. But okie doke. Uh, right, let's upgrade another house. Let's upgrade that one there. Why not? That'll do. Upgrade that one. In fact, you know, we can probably do a couple can possibly get that one done and that and maybe even that one done as well possibly yeah get those three upgraded and they're the ones that you're going to walk past as you go into the big temple so you're going to see some slightly flashier houses which is nice this is the beginning of a new era an era of more comfortable and efficient living for all commoners yay there we go <laughs> some fancy lovely upgraded houses food shortages okay yeah we've got plenty of raw food now our population continues to grow. It's time to increase the number of produced meals. Yeah, that would make sense, actually. There's a lot of raw food, but not that much in the way of meals. Okay, so upgrade the cookhouse, upgrade the fisherman outpost. Okay, so where is... where are these? Right, fisherman upgrade requires wood. Cookhouse upgrade requires wood. 
I see a problem here. We're not cutting down wood. Uh, hang on a minute. Hang on. Go over there. Get us some wood, please. Might be a little bit of a trek to get there, but you'll be fine. That'll be fine. Okay, we can't do too much until they've gathered some more wood. So let's just run time on a bit and let our lumberjacks go a lumberjacking. Right, there we go. 105 wood. I think that should be enough to get both of these upgrades now done. So fisherman outpost upgrade. Yeah, we'll have a bit of that. Thank you. And cookhouse upgrade. Yes to that as well. Okay, so they're both now done. So upgrade the fisherman outpost. So manage. And we need more wood to do that. Of course we do. Don't have much wood right now. And that's also going to need wood, I imagine. Another 50 wood. Okay, right. So we've got the upgrades available. but now haven't got the wood available to actually carry out the building work that the upgrades entail. So, okay, right. Hang on a minute. Let's just, uh, let's move time on a bit quicker again. Let's get, I think really, we have got a lot of raw food coming in. So possibly upgrading the cookhouse would be the better option right now. Because, yeah, we have got a lot of raw food anyway. So upgrade the cookhouse, please. So upgrade that. That's going to be super helpful because, yeah, lots of well, 186 raw food and only 60 meals. So if we could get, yeah, get another two people in there. OK, so we just meet, make sort of more sort of work slots available. OK, that's good. And start production. 20. Oh, so 20 raw food becomes 10 meals. Right. That's significantly better. OK, that's good. And then upgrade the fisherman outpost. Then we just need to run time on the tiniest bit. Can we get it to 50 wood, please? Because that's what we needed. And boop, there we go. Upgrade that. No, did, did we do that? We, um, Hang on. Upgrade the fisherman outpost. Why can't we upgrade the fisherman outpost? Oh, no, we can now. Okay, what are we lacking? Were we lacking in something else, I assume? Okay, yep, yeah, get that done as well, please. Somebody go make that all fancy and upgraded too. We are grateful for the improvements. Now everybody will get, what does that say? Something got in the way. Everyone gets more food, I think it said. Moon attack. The doom is approaching. Okay, hang on a minute. Oh no, the fog. The fog's back. By that word there. What is happening? Gods have mercy. It's the doom, says Mazatl, the commoner, without a hat on, sad times. Uh, Zyana, the refugee leader, says, To the temple, to Latawani. Okay, we might need your hat, Zanyana. Zanyana then says, The same happened to Kol Huacan. We must call the blood zone. Okay. I, I don't know what that means. How do we call the blood zone? Have you got their number? I, I don't know what that means. How do we call them? <laughs> okay. Uh, act oh, activate the blood zone. To activate blood zone, open the temple by clicking that thing. Okay. Then hold the button on the blood zone section of that, of the panel. Blood zone protects you from the cursed fog. Okay. So, on. Okay, so, oh, hang on. We have to press and hold it, do we? Okay. Right. The blood zone is now active. Um, right. I don't know what that does. So what did that do? Did we just sacrifice some people? I'm not entirely sure. Population protection. Ensure population security. Okay. Build blood beacons. Discover blood beacons. Okay, uh, the, right, blood is coming up quite a lot. The cursed fog blocks expansion of our city. Build blood beacons on the border to dispel the fog and make more space for buildings, for buildings. Oh, I see. So we can't build in the fog because we don't like the fog. The fog is troublesome and it's a bit damp and we don't like it. So we have to build beacons to kind of push the fog away. I think maybe over here might be quite a good idea. Oh, yeah, look, that's right on the edge of our build area. Okay, right, let's unlock this thing. So blood and wisdom. Blood beacon. We can get right now. Okay, so unlock the secrets of that. Um, and then, I think, is that what that is? That button appears to be lit up. Blood zone off. Uh, okay, hang on. We've already done that thing, though. We've done that already, lady. Um, where do we... Where's this other thing? Blood beacon. Hang on. Turn that off. Go into there. Go to temples. Blood beacon. Okay, so that needs, what's that, 15 cocoa, 25 wood and one, whatever one of those things is, obsidian, oh, okay, very fancy. Uh, where does that go? Needs to be on the edge of the blood zone. Uh, oh, okay, oh, I see, right, so it allows us to sort of expand out a little bit. So if we put that just there, that means we get to build all the way over there. Oh, that's cleared that out, and... We have a sinister looking kind of, you know, Indiana Jones temple-esque kind of beacon thing there. 
just, you know, gushing blood, casually just pouring blood out like you do. Very nice. Right, so I think, can we go and upgrade that as well while we're there? Might as well make that a little bit better. Did we upgrade that one, by the way? Is that upgraded? Oh, yeah, put two more people in there. Absolutely. Get two more people working in that. More food. That's never a bad thing. Right, so now it wants us to build another blood beacon. I don't know if we want to build over there, possibly. Maybe over in this direction would make sense. So if we say put that just there, that's going to clear that out. Sacred blood beacons have successfully expanded our city. More beacons means more space for our buildings. Okie doke, and there we go. Yeah, another sinister looking thing. Resources space. Okay, build a warehouse or something. Face with difficult times, we need a storehouse to store resources. Okie doke, would you like me to go and unlock a storehouse by any chance? Resources and a storehouse. Okay, I'm on it. I'm on it already, people with amazing hats on. I'm on it already. Um, we're gathering all the things, so we need to build the actual storehouse itself. Uh, okay, where would that be? That would be under... It's not an outpost. It's a workshop, apparently. Right, okay, so we'll have that. It's quite big. It's quite a big, chunky thing. How about if we put it next to that kind of beacon thingamajig? Um, hang on, tuck it down. I'm trying to figure out how we can get across here a bit easier if we put it underneath put it like that possibly like that and then we need to get a road and i think we have to get the path it needs to start next to road oh okay bother okay well bring that across like that look all the way to there and then come from oh hang on did i just cancel that so that to there and then that to down there and we've got a storehouse over here. Maybe not in the best place, but at least it's kind of out of the way. So there's still a bit more room over here for housing and all that kind of stuff. Right. Okay. Do we need to unlock anything else? A wood workshop? Um, stone miners outpost upgrade. Yeah, that sounds like a useful thing. We'll have a bit of that. I know the game hasn't told us to do that, but it sounds like a handy thing to have. And can we do it? No, we need some more wood. Oh, hang on. Are we Are we actually gathering wood? Uh, possibly not as much as we could be. Pop that over there, please. So yeah, only 20 wood. I think we used a bit to build that bridge. And possibly that as well. The storehouse is also going to require wood, I would imagine. Right, okay, move time on pretty quick. Okay, we're nearly there with the gathering of the wood. And there we go, wonderful, excellent. We are now fully stocked, which means we are prepared for the challenges ahead. Okie doke, Coatl, what's coming up next? I did have a little look through the sort of uh, research options with some of the tech tree while well, nothing else was going on. But um, yeah, there's quite a lot of stuff in there. There are many things. Gods. Blood zone looks much more weaker than yesterday, says Tozi, a noble princess. Tlatwani, blood zone drains God's power. They need blood to continue protecting us. I see where you're going. Okay, let's hold the high council at Templo Mare. Okay, does that mean you're gonna, you know, do a sacrifice of a poor person? Okay, let's go and have a little look over here. Hello, everybody. How are you? Have we all turned up to sacrifice club? We need to find a way to get more captives. We cannot let the blood zone fail. Well, doesn't this sound jolly all of a sudden? Okay, captives it is. Oh, dearie me. There is a famous merchant in the city at the moment. He can offer us captives for gold. Do we have some gold? Is it the guy with the little hat on? Bring the merchant to me. In the meantime, tell me more about him. I think it might be the guy with the little hat on. A very open person, they say, and he likes you. He offers fair prize in gold for captives. A lot of gold can be found in Texcoco Lake, our waters. Okay, there's plenty of gold out there then. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, it's you. It's it's Sitlali, the guy with the little exciting hat on. Greetings, Tlatuani. I hear that you are in need of captives. For such a young and handsome ruler, why, thank you, is it the hat? I can offer you captives for 100 gold. Okay, that seems reasonable, possibly. I don't know. I accept your offer, merchant. Oh, okay, that is reasonable. The blood zone requires sacrifices and we need captives to make those sacrifices. You will get your gold. Okay, I don't like this. I don't like having to sacrifice people, but do you know what? It's, you know, it's a sort of historically accurate Aztec simulator thing. That's what they did. Discover the gold miners outpost and acquire 100 gold. Is that gold there? Okay, that's exciting. Right, sounds fair. Let's hope we strike the deal in time. Okay, hang on a minute. Where would that be then? So resources, I imagine. And a gold 
Outpost, Woodcutter, Woodcutter Storehouse, uh, Blood and Wisdom, possibly. Blood Prayer. It's not going to be into Warfare. There's only one thing under Warfare. Food and Population. Uh, there's a farm. I don't think I'm getting the farm, but we can't do that. Um, hang on a minute. Discover the Gold Miner's Outpost. Uh, to build the Gold Miner's Outpost, you will need planks and stone blocks. Planks can be produced at the wood workshop and stone blocks at the stone workshop. Oh, okay. So we need to go to here. We need to unlock a wood workshop and a stone workshop. Okay, stone workshop, yes. Wood workshop, yes. Okay, and now I... There we go. Gold miner's outpost. We'll have a bit of that as well. Thank you very much. Right, so now... Now we have to get the two workshops in. And then when they're in, we can build the other thing. Oh, but something else has popped up. Hello, what was that? Crafting wood. Build a wood workshop and get planks. Oh, no, that's fine. We can do that. That's okay. Right, workshops. So, yeah, there we go. A wood workshop. Let's build one of those. Uh, let's put that... Uh, there's a lot of stone up there, which I don't really want to lose. But I think... I uh, cannot block the buildings. Oh, that's a bit of a nuisance. That can't go just there. Uh, how about then? If we put that like that, and then we can get a little bit of road connecting that up. It's all right. Put a road going to the middle because we like a bit of road and then a bit going across like that as well. Okay, so that's that in the stone workshop. It will make sense if that went over here somewhere because that's where the stone, I mean, that's where the stone was. It's being quite readily depleted, which is fine. So pop that just there. Right, there you go. Get building, folks. Two big, exciting new projects. Okay, a wood workshop will consume wood to make planks. Okay, yeah. I get that. That's fine. Oh, hang on a minute. Hang on. Select area. We might need to go and get some more trees. Uh, yep, yeah, there we go. Chop down all those trees. Okay, the stone workshop is in already. That's very quick. Okay, so get three people in that, please. Is that telling us to get a stone workshop? Okay, yeah, we're on that already. That's fine. So there's some people working in there. Um... Stone work. Oh, start production. Yeah, please, please do that. Please get on with the stuff. The day of monkey has begun. Yay, it's a fun, exciting day. Right, three people in there and start production there as well. So now we should be making planks and blocks. How much do we need to build the gold miner outpost then? So whereabouts that gold miner outpost is 50 cocoa, which we've got loads of now. Hot chocolate for everybody. It's going to be amazing. But we need 40... What's that? 40 planks. Oh, 40 planks and 40 blocks. Okay, that's fine. We're not quite at that point just yet. And we can't place it until we have the resources in storage. We can't sort of go, okay, build it here and deliver stuff to it as you get the resources. We've got to have them all, yeah, sort of ready and in a, a handy pile, I suppose, to then go and upgrade them. But yeah, okay, that's fine. Let's run time on until we've got 40 blocks and 40 planks. Okay, there we go. 45 blocks, 42 planks. That's all very wonderful. So put that there. Gold Miner Outpost. The only thing is, I don't know where the gold is. Is that all the gold just sort of hanging around under the surface there? Is that the gold? So if we put that just there, if we say, okay, pop that there. Hunger's been defeated again. Yay, go us. Right, so get this thing put together. That shouldn't take that long, I don't think. All the resources are quite nearby. Okay, so then have one, two, three, four, five people working there. Select area. Oh, okay. Uh, there's a few, there's six gold and six... Oh, dear. Okay. Have I not built this in a good place? Okay, hang on. There's nine gold over there. Um, ten gold. Okay, go over there for now. Grab ten gold. I thought all of those rock things were gold, but no, only a few seem to be. That could be a bit of a nuisance, couldn't it? Okay. Um, we're going to try to acquire as much gold as we can, but we'll have to keep an eye on that. There. Well, hang on. Hang on. The fishermen have done all the fishing. There's many meals, but no raw food. Okay, hang on a minute. Hang on. Where can you... Where are the fish? Are there any more fish? Uh, there's two sources of fish if they go there. Okay, so you head down river over there. And I assume this lot over here have also fished that bit to oblivion. Okay, there's one bit of fish just there. Go and get that bit for now. You can all gather around that one fish and try and catch it. That's going to be fine. Uh, how is the gold looking? 40 gold. Maybe in one deposit of gold, there is a lot of gold resource. So maybe maybe that is going to be enough. Maybe that's going to be plenty. I can't see where they are. I thought they'd be sort of on the map swimming around gathering you know, gold from under the water. But no, can't quite see them. But never mind. Right, we're nearly at 100 gold. 
And boop. There we go. Here are the 100 gold we agreed upon, merchant. Okay, so we hand over our hard-earned gold to the merchant. And he's going to give us some slaves. Yay. It's been a pleasure doing business with you, Aztecs. I wish you truly the best with your newly acquired captives. Oh dear. I don't I don't feel so I don't feel so happy about this. Now, Tlatuani, it is time. We must sacrifice the captives at something. I don't know, at something, something, probably to keep the gods happy, something or other. Okay, the day of Doggo has begun. Oh no. <laughs> it's the day of Doggo and it's the day of sacrifice. Okay, sacrifice captives. Oh no, do we really have to do this? I don't want to do this. Click the temple, then select the number of captives to sacrifice by clicking plus or minus and confirm a sacrifice to begin sacrifices and obtain blood. Uh, where is our blood total then? Is it a special meter at the top? Oh, this feels terrible. Okay, fine. We've got 10 people. I'm sorry, 10 people. We're going to pretend they're 10 really awful people. They're like really bad people. Really bad people that, I don't know, possibly are better off not being around. I don't know, but just don't look at this bear. We're just going to press that button and see what happens. Oh, no, I don't want to see it happening. <laughs> I don't want to see us doing this. Thanks to the sacrifices of captives, we obtain blood, which enables blood zone to protect us from the cursed fog. Don't look at this, but everybody, in order to survive, we must keep the blood running. Such is our fate, says Yautl, the war advisor. Oh, this is terrible. Don't look, everybody. I can't see where blood is. That's mud. That's obsidian. That's planks, but I can't see where it is. Our land is very shallow. And I was wondering about this. I was wondering about this because we saw that early on. Can we do some digging? I'd like to do a bit of digging. So, um, yeah, dig at least 10 mud from the ground. Okay, so you can do this by mud digging any ground terrain. So if we just, I don't know, where don't we, where aren't we that bothered about? Can we dig a bit over here, look? Can we dig that bit? That might be fun. So how does that work? So mud digging. Okay, so dig... Oh, need to start near water. So dig that bit. Okay, now is that going to be enough? I don't know. Okay, run that on and we'll see what they do. So people will leg it over here and hopefully start doing a spot of digging. Although nobody right now is that bothered. Okay, now there we go. They are doing some digging. So that's just two bits. And then yeah, we just get, um. there's water underneath. Okay, right. Let's just dig the rest out then. Ten of these, is it? Crikey's. And we can't just do a zone either. We kind of have to do it all a bit like this. So hang on a minute. Um, 40 cocoa for 8 mud. Sounds like a fantastic trade. There we go. Yay for some mud. Okay, there we go. We've got 10 mud. We've dug a little kind of canal type thing. It looks a little bit rubbish, let's be honest. But okay, that's what we did. And now it wants us to make the Chinampa farm and to discover new crops. Okay, I do want to get this done. I do want to get this done. I think after this is done, we will wrap things up. But I do want to see how this works. Because you know, I looked at this before and I thought, oh, that looks like a fun thing. Food and population. The Chinampa farms. So we can have Chinampa fields. I don't know what Chinampa is. I'm not quite sure. But okay, so research that. We've got that unlocked already because we've got plenty of resources. We're lacking stone now. Oh, hang on a minute. Hang on. Select area. There's some stone over there. It's going to be fine. Um, We might need them to gather some more stone before we get to do this. So outposts and then... A Chinampa farm. Okay, so it creates Chinampa fields on water where crops with raw food can be cultivated. So if we put one, say, down here somewhere, although hang on, it's got to be connected to the road network. If we, hang on, if we put it there, is that a terrible idea because it's not near the water? I kind of feel like we've put it there. Hang on, hang on. We'll give this a go. It might go horribly, horribly wrong, but let's get this done. So there we go. Nice and quick. Um, we'll have five commoners and then create Chinampa. Uh, oh, yeah, down here, look. Oh, this is fun. So we'll have one, one bit there. That's all we can do. That's all the mud we can muster to get one little field. Hunger's been defeated. Okay, hang on a minute. Do they need, do they need like a bridge? Do you need a bridge to get over here, possibly? Um, oh, hang on. That, was, that wasn't that was happy. Hang on. Why wasn't need to start next to a road? Oh. Oh. Oh, dear. Okay, I don't know if they can get to that or not. They seem happy. They seem happy. Uh, one, build medium Chinampa field. Oh, that's a small one. How do you build a medium one? I just put create Chinampa. 
I don't have to burn. Oh, there's a mead. Oh, botherations. Okay, hang on a minute. <laughs> oh, that thing is huge and we need more mud. Okay, okay. Slightly messed up our goal there. I built a little field, not a big one. Um, Right, okay. No, it's fine. Uh, can we destroy it? Get rid of that. Blow that up. Away with it. That's 10 mud. So now we need to get a little bit more mud, I think, first. So let's just go and chop and chop this bit up a bit more, shall we? Let's just go and slice and dice this bit. Right, there we go. 20 mud. We should now be able to get ourselves a medium-sized chinampa field. So here we go. Have one of those. Create chinampa. And can we put it just there? Because that seems sensible. Okie doke. That's now in. Just a giant field. Is a discover pineapple cultivation or beans cultivation? Uh, okay. I mean... Pineapples or beans? I mean, both are very exciting. Do you know what, though? We might go for pineapples just because they've got pointy bits on the top. I mean, beans are super good as well. Beans are really, really good. But you know, pineapples have got pointy bits on. That's exciting. Look, they look more interesting. Visually, a pineapple is way more interesting to look at than a bean, I would say. So let's go for pineapple cultivation. We'll have a bit of that. I did notice that we are not cutting down any trees. Hang on. There is one tree there. We'll chop that one down, that's fine. I'm excited about the possibilities of that farm that I then didn't see. Oh, the final trial. Oh, okay, I was going to wrap things up, but we might as well do this. We need more blood to appease the gods. How much blood do the gods need? Can't they just have some tea? What's wrong with them? And we need more resources to expand Tecnot... No, no, hang on. Uh, Tenochtitlan. I think that's how you pronounce it. These things will only be obtained in expeditions around the Valley of Mexico. Okie doke. Oh, hang on a minute. They've run out of fish. There's some fish over there. Go over there. In order to send expeditions, we need a, a departure ward. It is the final step. Okay, so build a little kind of uh, expedition outpost type thing. Build the Capuli departure ward. Okay, so warfare. Oh, oh, we're getting fighty, are we? Okay, fine. We're going to go and get fighty. I see. Be like that. So military... And we've got our first and only military thing. We need... I think we've got all the resources we need, actually. We need 100 planks, 100 blocks. We've got that. And 100 cocoa. Do you know what? We're okay. Oh, that thing is enormous. Good grief. <laughs> okay, that's incredibly big. Where can that live? Can it live over here somewhere? Can we put it... It can stick out into the water a little bit over there. Let's put it over there, look. And then we need to get a road set up for it. This is going to be all fine. So, yeah, let's bring that across like so. Okay, good. And then out the front of the military building thing, they've got a blood fountain thingamajig. Just, you know, really, really spur the soldiers on. Hurrah! Blood for the blood guard and all that kind of stuff. Oh, hang on a minute. I was trying to find a place where we could go and grab some more rocks, but something's popped up. The narrator has decided to intervene. Tlatuani stood atop the departure ward with Zayanya. Yuatl and Coatl, with a heavy heart, he looked at his city. Oh, that's a bit sad. Why? Uh, Zianya, Yuatl, Coatl, I am grateful for all you've done for ten... Hang on a minute, hang on, I've written it down. <laughs> Where is it? Tenochtitlan. You've been my advisors, but most importantly, my friends. Without you, I wouldn't be the leader I am today, and I wouldn't have this amazing hat. Oh, that's quite nice, although she's got a better hat. Thank you, Tlatuani. If it were not for you, I and my people might not have survived. You are now everything to me. Oh, that's lovely. We can all be best friends. Let's have a nice big hug. It's been an honour to serve you, Tlatuani. You are now ready to win a war. Okay, this is a surprise. I don't think fighting would be in the demo big group. I am proud of all that you have accomplished, said Coatl, Tlatuani. But I know that our journey is not yet over. Okay, isn't it? You're right. The blood moon is coming and we must stop it. We need the best highborns for future expeditions. Valley of Mexico is full of dangers, but by the Huitzila Pochtli, we will emerge victorious. <laughs> yeah, you get a lot more done in your empire if you had shorter names of things. Good grief. Uh, okay, with that, the four of them stood in silence, gazing out at the Capluli departure ward, knowing that their journey was only just beginning. I imagine that's going to be the end of the demo. Is it going to be the end of the demo? I'm not quite sure. What's happening now, game? Oh, and there we go. Yes, it is the end of the demo. The game just had a little bit of a think about it. But yeah, look at that. So if we go back one, hang on a second. So we can go and explore the Valley of Mexico. 
because apparently Tenoch Titlan is built over lots of little islands. So we go and sort of uh, grab some more islands to go and settle on. That could be quite fun and go and do some exploring. Gather highborns to lead the Capulis. So they must be the fighty people. So our Calpulis are the soldiers. Okay, so Golden Wind and Jaguar Warriors. I know those from Civ. Okay, uh, create canoe-based resource chains. Okay, so a little bit of canoe action going on. Uh, compete with others. Yep, there we go. Got to go do some sort of uh, fighting with other people. We sort of saw that a little bit with the idea of having to have a fight. Engage in the conflict between the sun and the moon. Ooh, okay. Hang on, hang on. What was that? Embark on a story campaign to prevent the forces of the moon goddess from bringing the end of the world. Okay. Wow. And there was me going, oh, hang on a minute, what shall we have, pineapples or beans? I kind of feel like that's a little bit, so the stakes are higher with this one. But there we go. There we go. Right, so we've come to the end of the demo. That's kind of, yeah, let's wrap things up for the demo. Oh, and there's the people that made the demo. Well done, you lovely lot. Good job. Well, there we go. That was the demo of Aztecs The Last Sun. And I really quite enjoyed that. I thought that was very enjoyable. And there was a lot to it, given that it's a demo. I thought the demo would be relatively short. But no, there's quite a lot going on in that. There was plenty of building work. We got a little way down the research tree. There was all sorts of decisions to make and people to to talk to and we did end up doing quite a lot of stuff and of course there was some human sacrifice in there as well which is to be expected because you know it's an Aztec city builder that kind of thing happened in Aztec times unfortunately but yeah I quite enjoyed that I thought that was very good and that was only really sort of scratching the surface as we saw at the end there there is more to the full complete game there's more exploration going on and there's fighting and warfare and a big campaign all that kind of stuff so there we go that was really good that was very very enjoyable we'll keep an eye out for that in the future and maybe we might pop back to it at some point when there's a little bit more to do other than what we've seen in the demo but yes we shall wrap things up for now hopefully you did enjoy this if you did please do leave a like that would be most marvelous indeed and also if you're not already then please do subscribe to keep up to date with all the other bits and bobs and nonsense and gubbins that we get up to in the Geek Cupboard. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard, and I will see you next time. The City of Cupboard, it can be full of geeks, very loyal geeks to me. It's this sort of stripy hill. That's interesting. Oh, stripy mountain. Sorry, I, I downgraded you to a hill. It didn't really irritate the Norwegians. Everyone had gold. People were lying on beds of gold. They were eating gold. They were trying to wash their hair with gold. There was gold literally everywhere in our empire.